What's up everybody, Craig here. So, I know it's been a little bit before I put some videos out, but I'm, uh, I got some ideas in the head, I got some things on the horizon. and I've been busy lately. I've been uh, traveling back uh, from Korea to the United States, the United States to Korea, so I'm back in Korea now. I should be here for another six months, and, uh, and so I got some ideas for some new content I'm going to put out there, so just be patient. But this particular video we're going to get into today is going to be specifically regarding okay you've already followed other people's or my uh, install steps you've got Hackintosh installed you just can't seem to get things working right you can't get the drivers to work right to get the graphics card to work you can't get the USB ports to work you can't what are, uh, get the audio to work so I managed to um, kind of fool with the files and get mine 100% working and then save it and then I've tried it on some other folks to where it does work for there. So I think it should work for you if you just follow these steps. Um, so again, this is just to tackle the bug side of it. Uh, you should already uh, have Unibeast, uh, make your USB install. You should be already be through all that stuff. Um, so this is just to um, tackle the bugs. If you're looking for stuff like FaceTime iMessage fix, I have videos for that. So you can go look for that. Uh, let's see uh, other than that uh, we'll get into this but uh, just to go over a quick few things I'm going to get into in the future here uh, I got a uh, AMD RX 480 sitting over there so um, I'm going to do a video about getting that thing working on the Hackintosh and why that's important uh, so stay tuned for that uh, some other things I had uh, I think I'm gonna do a video of uh, kind of the best way to back up your computer or your files at least uh, I think that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and tackle this puppy. Let's get into uh, tackling the bugs and just follow these steps. Hopefully we get your Hacktosh working. Okay, first things first, uh, restart your computer. I have a, a Gigabyte Z170X motherboard. So I'm going to hold the delete key while booting up. As you can see, and then while holding the delete key, it'll bring me to the BIOS. All right, so I'm at my BIOS, okay? Now, of course, I have everything set just right, but um, what you're going to do right off the bat is you're going to go down. Now, I recommend a wired keyboard here because I had a wireless keyboard and the F buttons wouldn't register in the BIOS. So if you're having trouble with a wireless keyboard, um, they're like eight bucks, just get a wired keyboard. But you're going to go ahead and hit F7. That's your uh, load optimized defaults. So, yes. All right. So, as you can see, if you've seen my previous videos, this looks a lot different than what we were working with before. And, uh, yeah, Gigabyte decided to redo the whole thing and hid some shit, too. And I had to dig for it. I had to find it. And it was annoying. So, let's go ahead and uh, get through all of it. All right, so first things first, I just want to hit uh, advanced. So in the MIT section, again, this is a Gigabyte Z170X motherboard. So if you have an Asus, you may have a different layout or ASRock or MSI for that matter. So I'm going to go to advanced frequency settings because I like to overclock my CPU. Um, and I don't do it manually just because I don't feel like screwing with stuff and, you know, messing with multipliers. But um, Gigabyte has this cool feature called uh, CPU upgrade and auto. So I'm going to go down to my processor, and I had it at 4.6 before, uh, but it would crash sometimes when I was uh, messing with some Adobe programs, so I keep it at 4.5, so 4.5 gigahertz, and that's going to be my overclock. Now that's just me personally, you don't need to do this for Hackintosh, but I'm just showing you what I do. Okay, um, so then we're going to go over to the peripheral section, so we're here. And we're going to go down to, now remember with load optimized default, the F7, that's just going to get it to your default settings. So your optimized default settings. And we're going to find this called super IO configuration. You're going to hit enter and you're going to disable that. So let's go ahead and disable that. Okay. I'm going to hit escape to go back one. Now this is the motherfucker they hid. So XCHI handoff was somewhere else before. But I had to dig for it and find it. But you're going to go into USB configuration. And you're going to find uh, XHCI handoff. And you're going to enable it. So enable that. And then we're going to go over to 
VT dash D and then we're going to uh, disable virtualization and then go down to IO APIC entries and we're going to disable that so that is our setup and again I don't know what you got going but if you want to go over here to your boot options too um, I have it booting up to uh, the Hackintosh so it's already ready to go so you might want to change it. I don't know what you have it booted up to but I'm going to save and exit hit enter All right, so as you can see, we're here at the Clover screen. Again, I'm not going to go into all this stuff. Um, you should already know how to boot up into Mac at this point. This is just to work out the bugs. If you don't, then you need to go to my previous videos on how to install. So this is just to work out the bugs. So again, if you're not getting the graphics working, you need to go ahead and go into options and put in your boot arguments, your NB underscore disable equals one, you know, install your web drivers. But for right now, you should already be booted up and installed Hackintosh and then maybe some things aren't working correctly. So I'm going to go ahead and boot up into Mac. Alright, first things first, I'm going to share a folder called Hackintosh Bugs. You're going to open that folder, alright. Now I'm going to have the NVIDIA web drivers for 10.12.3, um, but obviously times change and this will probably tomorrow be 12. Uh, 10.12.4 so um, I'll put the link to the uh, NVIDIA web drivers in the description the cool thing is Tony Mac on their website they added it to their little download Dropbox so that'll just bring you to a page that has all the NVIDIA web drivers so that's a cool thing um, but what I first want you to do is click tools and drag click and drag all these tools into your applications folder I already have them there so obviously I'm not so once you've done that, we're not going to run multi-beast yet. Usually post install you run multi-beast. We're not going to do that yet. So go ahead and open your download or open your NVIDIA web drivers. Um, if you don't have them, uh, you may not have uh, internet at this time. If you have another computer, download it from another computer uh, and then with a flash drive, bring it over here. Or, I mean, we can just keep booting up with NV underscore disable equals one and start working through um, your bugs. But basically, you're not going to have internet till you uh, drag all these files in. So you can either install these now or we can do it after we take care of your EFI partition. So with that said, if you have that USB install that you installed Hackintosh uh, with, uh, in right now go ahead and eject that and then take it out and if you don't know how to eject it would appear right here you can either drag it into the trash or you can just right click and eject eject it take it out and then once that's out then uh, that program I gave you uh, then I told you to all these that I told you to drag in your applications folder one of them is called Clover Configurator so I'm gonna go ahead and go to Clover Configurator oh, I got a folder named Hackintosh where you at there you go so Clover Configurator, and then here it is, okay? And we're going to go ahead and, and mount the EFI partition. Um, so this one's mine. Um, so I'm going to hit Mount and then Open. Obviously, you see an EFI partition there So and then an EFI folder. That's there because I already have everything working, right? But what you're going to bl bring up is a blank page. Nothing's going to be there. If it is, that means you ran multi-beast. And go ahead and... Um, if you just want to follow along with me, you can go ahead and delete this, uh, drag it into your uh, trash, and then uh, I want you to go ahead and open that folder I shared, and this folder that says EFI. So once this folder is gone, or nothing was there to begin with, you're going to drag the one I gave you into your EFI partition, okay? And then you're going to let it copy, all right? Next step, you're going to open it up, you're going to go to Clover, and then you're going to go to Kexts, and then you're going to open 10.12. All of these Kexts, this is what's going to give you internet and all that good stuff. So what I want you to do is go ahead then and open up Easy Kext, the program that I shared. And um, so all you have to do with this is open it up. And then it says drag files onto window on, on the window to process them. You're gonna highlight them all. You're gonna drag them onto the window. You're gonna drop them. It's gonna process it all. It's gonna tell you you're good, okay. And and then you just finish that process. You can probably have to put your password in again, 
Okay. After that, what you're going to do, you're still not done yet. Um, you're going to go ahead and open up Kex Utility. And you're going to hit Admin. And this one is just going to go through all your stuff and, and, and plug and play and make sure everything's pretty and good to go and make sure, see this library extensions and blah, 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 blah. And make sure that those Kex that you dragged in Easy Kex are there where they're supposed to be and in the right place. Um, so we didn't run multi beast. What we did is we dragged my EFI partition into yours. Um, we installed the Kex. Uh, we made sure the Kex are good to go. And last but not least, make sure those NVIDIA web drivers are installed. Once they are, you should see this little thing up there. You can do this and then you should have a check mark if you haven't got the graphics working yet next to the OS 10 default graphics driver. Uh, you're going to click on NVIDIA Web Driver. It's going to ask for your password, and then it's going to open the NVIDIA Web Painter or something like that. And then it'll say, hey, you need to restart your computer in order for this to work. You restart your computer, and everything should be working correctly. You should have audio. As you can see, we got audio going here. I got it going to my speakers. I got uh, HDMI audio. I got my uh, Turtle Beach going. So audio works. Uh, your USB ports should all work and then your graphics card should work so everything should be working uh, if this works for you go ahead and uh, throw me a like uh, subscribe comment let me know what you think uh, let me know if there's any future videos that you want to see uh, one more I forgot to mention was I'm going to do some benchmarks uh, between the uh, 980 Ti and the RX 480 now of course you're like well the 980 Ti is stronger than the 480 that is correct However, there are some things that uh, is, uh, it has hardware uh, acceleration enabled like Final Cut and I want to test the difference between the RX 480 with hardware acceleration and the 980 Ti which doesn't. So basically uh, my Intel i7-6700K would be all uh, doing the legwork with uh, rendering videos and Final Cut. But again, I want to see the difference between the two. So we'll see how that works out. Uh, so thanks for watching. Again, like, subscribe, comment, and take it easy.